Hey, what's going on there, Dice Rolls? Paul here, and I'll be your DM for a while. And today I have something pretty cool to share, something that just came out uh, called The Mortuary, which is a supplement for Planescape, the new book that's coming out by Wizards of the Coast. Now, listen, I don't cover a ton about Wizards of the Coast products necessarily, except for stuff that I really, really think is kind of good. Uh, and I believe The Mortuary it fits that description. It's uh, pretty cool, and it will literally scare the crap out of your out of your players. And so I wanted to share with you, because you don't have to use it with Planescape. You don't need the book. All you need is your three core rule books, and that's it. But there's plenty of stuff in here you can just drop into any adventure you may be running, especially during the spooky time of the season. So let's check out The Mortuary. All right, so here we have the Adventure Atlas, The Mortuary. And I like the fact that they call it an Adventure Atlas because that's really the same as, as a sandbox. It's really uh, offering a place for your players to come and kind of play around in. It's not an adventure, uh, but they do provide some hooks that you can use that if you want to go into the mortuary, well, there are some ways for you to do that, and we will get to that. So let's go ahead and start through. You can see here, this you saw on the thumbnail, that is Skull. Uh, the Lich, the big bad, in case you, uh, there, there is a opportunity to fight the Lich if you need to, but you may want to fight with him uh, to maybe gain some favor with the dead. The mortuary rises above Sigil, the crossroads of the multiverse, like a dead hand erupting from a grave, headquarters of the Heralds of the Dust, one of the oldest philosophical factions in the city of Doors. The mortuary is a house of death, a morgue, funeral home, and tomb of immense scale linked to burial sites on the other planes and worlds. The mortuary is located in the Hive Ward, the seediest of Sigil's districts. In the mortuary's eerie yet reverent chambers, the Heralds of Dust receive, process, and lay the dead to rest on a multiversal scale, ensuring every creature that dies in Sigil earns its obsequies. Obsequies? That's how I'm going to say it. Managing the dead is a grueling and thankless work, but without the mortuary and its grim workforce, many of whom are undead, there would be no room in sigil left for the living. Bodies would pile in the streets, the stench of rotting corpses would fill the air, and relentless souls with nowhere to go would plague citizens in droves. Which is a great plot hook. What happens when the mortuary shuts down? What happens if it if if it's taken over by the undead and they want the dead to walk the earth? So that's to right there is a perfect uh, a perfect uh, hook for your players if that's what you want to do. So uh, it goes into using the supplement, which I've kind of already told you you don't need much else except for the three core books. It tells you about the Heralds of Dust. The Heralds of Dust believe life is a false existence. Everything and everyone is already dead. They act as Sigil's undertakers, meticulously caring for the city's dead in hopes of breaking an endless cycle of mortality for themselves and others. Now, something I thought of is that if you want to play an undead uh, character, you could always play the Reborn, which is in Van Richter's Guide, or the Dampier. Uh, vampire, basically, uh, which would be an interesting concept to use uh, amongst the dead. How would the dead view them? Would they would they view them as anomalies? Would they view them as anathema? Be an interesting uh, deal there to have some characters like that as part of the party. The Heralds of Dust, or the Dusters, as they are commonly called, see death as a spectrum. Everyone is dead, of course, but some are deader than others. In their work, dusters seek to unravel the secrets of true death, a higher state of oblivion that transcends the grave. The path to true death is a mystery, but dusters maintain they must divest themselves of passion to progress. Death shows no desire or emotion, and neither should its heralds. So that gives you a little idea about the faction and, you know, all of the characters could be dusters. If they want to join a faction and join the dusters where they're trying to, once again, correct the mortuary issue that maybe the dead are rising everywhere because there's some sort of holdup down in the uh, mortuary. Uh, you know, I think that would be a fine, fine way uh, to use characters to be able to do that. And then you have heralds. Heralds of Dust roles. So basically, you could also have as backgrounds. I think this would be fun backgrounds for characters if you're going to pick the um, the Dusters as a faction. You could be a corpse collector or an exorcist or an extractor, morticians, uh, a necrologist, a recruiter, a remnant, 
Um, and then you have Grizzly Components, if you want to. Uh, those are the services that they offer. So maybe you're you're down there and you're looking for something very specific uh, to have uh, in case you need gruesome gruesome material components, bones and and their dust, blood, eyeballs, flesh, fingernails. It's really kind of a uh, uh, a flea market of of undead. That would be an interesting little encounter uh, shopping in the uh, shopping in the mortuary as a giant undead flea market poisons you can get spell casting services dusters duster spell casters sell their services to creatures throughout the hive ward standard prices are summarized so you have the spells there that you can uh, purchase from somebody from the dusters and then there are charms these are really cool charm of, of the dead truce this charm grants you respect among the dead Hostile undead creatures with an allegiance of six or lower are instead indifferent towards you. So if you had some sort of, you know, basically protection from undead, you know, kind of like I think of that scene in uh, World War Z where all the, you know, all the undead are moving around, you know, the one, uh, you know, kid uh, who then is believed to be sick and that's why the undead don't want him. So you could have something like the, uh, the, the charm of the dead. Uh, where you can move amongst the undead as long as you don't attack them. I believe that's what it says. Uh, if you're not attacking them, they're not going to bother you. So you have a way to do that. You can get some charms if that's what you need, because maybe you need to go defeat the undead. And the only way to do that is get some charms to be able to move amongst them uh, so you can uh, figure out what's going to happen. Uh, you have the charm of incorpor incorporeality. Incorporeality? I'm going to say that. Uh, the charm allows you to assume a ghostly, incorporeal form as a bonus action. While in this form, you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. You can also move through creatures as objects, as if they were difficult terrain. But you take 1d10 force damage if you end your turn inside a creature or object. You remain in this form for one minute until you end as a bonus action. Once used, this charm goes away. Still a pretty cool, pretty cool charm. So there's the mortuary. And here's where we're going to get into some of the cool artwork. Um, this is a really, really uh, <laughs> scary looking place. And you have all, you have planar portals. And there's a map for this, by the way, that will come up here in just a second. Uh, but here's some mortuary portals. So how do you enter into the mortuary? Well, the, you just roll on a six-sided dice and it can be any one of these things. The eye of a giant skull, an open casket. So another way you can get players in is by, you know, attending a funeral. And maybe something happens at that funeral that the portal opens up and you're able to get into the mortuary from the funeral somehow. Maybe maybe you, you're sent to retrieve maybe uh, a body that is not supposed to be dead and you're supposed to get that, get that person back. Mortuary encounters, so you have a, a table for that. Uh, if they are roaming around or causing some sort of havoc, well, then some of these can show up like an animated coffin, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, death dogs, uh, skeletons, and then you have encounters uh, that are for levels 5 through 10. So, then, yeah, so these are your encounters by level. So here you go. You have levels 1 through 4, you have 5 through 10, and you have uh, 11 through 16. So you have the different levels, so you can use this for any level character if you want. And then you have mortuary location. So you have the corpse receiving and shipping. This is for characters third and fourth level. So if you're going to go in there, make sure they're probably third or fourth level. Uh, this is the shipping and receiving area. Look at that. Now, one thing is this too. It has a player's version, which tells me that it, they're going to put it in maps. I have not seen it show up or pop up in my maps area of D&D Beyond yet. And if you've not checked out maps, maps are really good. And I'll put a link right here if you're interested in seeing my little review of the maps that are on D&D Beyond. Um, but like I said, these are not up on D&D Beyond yet. But I hope, I mean, it's the player version. So I would hope that, uh, that they're going to put those in there if you purchase this. Then you have a spirit sump. And I'm thinking like a sump pump. Uh, where where you know there's all this swirling death that's happening there, uh, and things are trying to get out of it. Uh, things are trying to <laughs> things are trying to get out of there. I also think too of like Ghostbusters, right? Because underneath the underneath the city, there's that goo that you know where these spirits are coming from and so forth, or the containment area. Right, I see this is kind of like the spirit containment area that they had where they'd put the you know put their thing in and they'd release the spirit in there, and then 
the uh, you know you could do it to where you know now you have to fix the containment area. This this the spiritual no longer contains. Something's wrong with the sump pump, and now they're getting out, which is actual uh, an actual uh, encounter, I believe, uh, with the skull, uh, which we'll get to here in just a minute. But here's the spirit sump. This is like a, a walkway, I guess, over that, over the uh, the sump there, which is really, really sharp looking. That's really, really cool looking. If you look at it from the player's version, uh, that's really, really nice. Really, really nice. Can't wait. If they, uh, Like I said, I hope they put it up in the maps because uh, this will be fun to play in there. And then you have Never Vault 8th through 10th level. Uh, and this is the Crypts of the Never Vault Imprisoned Deathless Threats with a tenacious grip on the realms of the living. And in this encounter, characters journey to the Never Vault, a hazardous, hazardous containment crypt beneath, uh, deep beneath the mortuary for creatures that should be dead, but somehow aren't. The defense for the vault and several threats within are detailed here. So you have an encounter there where they have to deal with something down here that is just roaming around that should not be roaming around. It's escaped from somewhere uh, that it should not have escaped from. And then you have Factal Skull's Orrery. And this is for 11th, uh, 11th level or higher. So if you manage to get through all the others and you want to play this as a series of encounters uh, that you're going to have, well, then you're eventually going to get here. It says, from this orrery of souls, Factor Skull in, uh, scours the multiverse for secrets of, about true death, the annihilation sublime. In this encounter, the characters must aid Skull in dispatching a powerful threat that has come through the orrery to wreak havoc on the mortuary and its inhabitants. So you get to work with Skull, like I said, maybe to gain some favor, to get some of those, maybe those uh, those charms that we talked about early. Maybe you could ask for those. But here is the orrery. Uh, it's, wow, that is really, really, really vivid. Um, but then you have Factor, Factal Skull has, uh, you know, all his own stats in here. The Path of Graves is a hub of portals to and from morbid sites across the plains. Characters who arrive at the mortuary via a planar portal might be transported here, which you could do through the funeral, possibly. Uh, the Heralds of Dust leverage the Path of Graves portals to reach distant sites relevant to their work, such as burial sites on other worlds, magical furnaces on the plane of fire for cremating uh, fire-resistant creatures. Uh, that's pretty good. Characters can use the Path of Graves to reach the same faraway places returning to the mortuary in between adventures and that is really sharp that is a great looking map so here's all the little portals through here you can get to and then here's the adventure hooks mortuary adventure hooks wrongfully interred death knight a multiversal law dictates that death council must over over must convene in the mortuary once every century the characters are charged with exhuming a series of influential undead entombed on other planes and escorting them to the mortuary some of the council members are especially cranky when awoken uh, when a godling is born on the upper plains, a wave of positive energy sweeps over the mortuary through its myriad of ports, portals, restoring hundreds of long-dead creatures to life. And Factor Skull announces his retirement. Before he transcends to do that, he asks the characters to help him name his successor. Well, that would be interesting. Those are really good hooks. Uh, then you get the mortuary creatures, the animated coffin. I almost put this in the thumbnail because it is uh, just super creepy and you see this thing coming at you. Oh my gosh. It is just nightmare fuel is what it is. Um, so here's some uh, animated coffin contents. What could be in these things? Well, a swarm of bats or skeletons, a groaning mummy, a yellow mold, vampire spawn, uh, a portal to the path of graves. And there it is. My word. That is scary. Scary looking. <laughs> this thing coming at you. And uh, armor class 16 hit point 60. Uh, let's see. Uh, so basically, actually, maybe like a mimic here. It says if the animated coffin is motionless at the start of the combat, it has an advantage on its initial row. Moreover, if the creature hasn't observed the coffin move or act, the creature must succeed a DC 18 intelligence check to discern the coffin is animate. So basically like a, it could be a mimic. Uh, it's just an undead mimic. Uh, then you have spider climb. It's got, yeah, you want to see that crawling on the ceiling. Uh, multi attacks got two slams. And then it's got Entrap. Uh, one large or small creature hit. The target has grappled condition. Until this grapple ends, if the target is not undead, the target has restrained condition and takes piercing damage at the start of its turn. The animated coffin can grapple only one creature at a time, which I would say the goal is to suck that 
creature, uh, the, the the character, into the coffin because it's a portal to somewhere else. It, this they could it could be a portal where you have no idea where it's going, but if you get dumped in there, you're appearing somewhere else, uh, and that would be <laughs> that would be chaotic, but also a little bit fun. And there's Factal Skull and the current uh, Factal of the Heralds of Dust. And he is a ugly, ugly looking creature, but very, very cool because he's just a floating head and floating hands. Very little left to his body there. Uh, and then those are his stats. Pretty good. Armor class 17, 210 hit points. Fog of Death, Death Knell, Withering Touch, all the good stuff that a Lich should have. And that is the end. All right, and that is the Mortuary, the new uh, supplement to Planescape, which talks about the Mortuary. And you can join right here. Join the Heralds of Dust if you want there. These graphics, I think, are available on on d d Beyond. So I think you can get those graphics if you want to show your players uh, the different factions they can join, and this being one of them. Uh, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is this something that you would use in your campaign? Uh, are you interested in Planescape? Uh, how could you, which, which monster or which creature are you most interested in? Uh, in using against your players. So leave me some comments down below. Would love to hear from you. But that is it, guys. If you like this video, be sure to go ahead and click the thumbs up button. That tells me you like the video and you want more of them. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and you get videos like this on a regular basis. But that's it for tonight, guys. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate you being a part. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.